awards for 2018 has recently come and gone, so I wanted to make a video about it. Now let's see the categories here. Best narrative <laughs> for a fucking video game. Narrative, like Mario is not going to win that. Huh? Best soundtrack. Oh, um, well, it takes me years to get on hand with that, so. Um, best mobile game. <laughs> Uh, I guess we'll chuck that up to Fortnite. <laughs> um, best RPG. Well, what are you fucking stupid? There was only like one good game from that. Best action game. Well, there wasn't even that many this year. Best racing game. Oh, no one fucking cares. Same for sports. Um, biggest sellout. Biggest con. Um, yeah. I can, well, fuck all these categories. I'm just going to do my own fucking game awards because I can and you can't stop me. So let's do this. There are quite a few different nominees here. Um, let's start with the first most basic and shitty one because we're just starting off with a countdown timer. And, you know, we just got to start something low. Indie Game of the Year. The nominees are Dead, Frostpunk, The Hex, and Donut County. The winner is the Hex. Despite combining so many games and genres, it manages to not only work but enhance both story and gameplay, which amazed me. It was the perfect balance between the two, and it just worked in tandem so well for having so many games. It had like nine or ten or something like that, it's something ridiculous. Nothing felt half arsed either when they were implementing each game. It felt, it wasn't like they just added it for the sake of adding another game and saying, oh, we added more depth. No, it actually felt fully fleshed out, like each thing. So that's why Hex beat it over the other competition which it came pretty close with certain games like Dead and so forth, but it just simply managed to do more and do better because the more you do, the more of a risk you are taking. So to pull it off is more impressive, even though bigger isn't always better. Now that the show's started, I think we should get off the other small ones just in real quick rapid succession. So Puzzle Game of the Year, Donut County, for being quite a different way to do the puzzle genre, a different creative and intuitive design like many others all strive to be in the puzzle department. Horror Game of the Year, Call of Cthulhu, because there was virtually no one else to compete with. Look at this horror monster here. Just look at it, scary as shit. Now let's get to the next real challenger, Fight Team of the Year, the competitors, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, Blaz Blue, I guess? I don't know. Super <laughs> 6. <laughs> there weren't that many like, good fighting games. The winner is Dragon Ball Z. Despite its depth and complexity within its mechanics, its type of mechanics, it seems to be one that's quite easy to pick up yet difficult to master. And I really admire that with games like Smash Bros. and so forth. It's it makes it sound because fighting games for me are hard for me to get into and stuck into. So if it's not easy at the beginning, then I won't ever stay long enough to actually master it. So I really enjoy this game, especially with this wide variety of cast members. One of the few games that can survive despite for a fighting game that doesn't need a ton of different crossover characters to really be in there with the roster that is doesn't just survive by its roster but more by its mechanics and the fact that it succeeded so well in more than just the anime and uh, com uh, cartoon crowd really amazes me it absolutely deserves fighting game of the year 2018 on to perhaps the best award for the night will be biggest disaster of 2018 the nominees are Metal Gear Survive, Sea of Thieves, Fallout 76, and Agony. The winner is... For 
rule out 76. The sad bit with this one is, I don't even need to say anything more than just list all the problems that came with this game, Fallout 76. I mean, somehow it released the same year as Metal Gear Survive and managed to do a hell of a lot worse. So, before it even launched, we had a problem of, the, of lies, the game deleting its own save files for pre-installation, having to pre-order for the beta, having the nukes crash your game, and then when it launched, we had false advertising issue, Nuka Dark Rum controversy, the people's privacy policy all problem, and many, many more issues. This game was just surrounded in controversies. It's almost like a weekly installment thing of what law did they almost ruin in just how colossal of a fuck up Fallout 76 has been. Like it's a fucking cartoon or some shit. Virtual reality or AR? Why the fuck are we calling it that? Game of the year. The nominees are Tetanus. Every sex game ever. Chat online game. Or sit and touch things real carefully. The winner is... Whatever the fuck this is. And just before we get wrap up tonight and get to the game of the year for this year, how about we go to Journalist Circle Jerk. Game of the Year 2018 Award. The nominees are Far Cry 5, God of War, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and Red Dead Redemption 2. The winner is Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm just fucking with you. That's not going to win every award of tonight, is it? The winner is... God of War. Games are now movies, everybody. Woo, cinema gaming. What an absolute masterpiece, everybody. Give it up. Uh, a, a script. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a game script. It's a script. And of course, the moment you've all been waiting for that we hold it the last moment of tonight, because fuck you. Game of the Year 2018. The nominees are... Dragon Ball Fighter Z, The Hex, Monster Hunter, and Donut County. The winner is Monster Hunter, of course. Monster Hunter World is, as you know, an action adventure RPG where you do things like talk to this 2D book. Well, 1D bitch, that's only characteristics is to be happy, but it's a great game regardless of things like the lack of depth from its characters and its overall world, where your main goal is to just make everything extinct and then find out about it afterwards and cheer that you found out about it, even though you just made it extinct, making it pointless to do so, is because this is a game driven by its gameplay, and its gameplay is fun, addictive, and you get to play with a cat, so how can I not love this game? In this RPG, you, this game where your best defense is your raincoat, in this game, your objective is to run around and hunt down everything in sight or capture it, to put as your play thing in your room. This is a great game with a vast amount of depth to its game and combat system, even though half the time you'll only be using half the moves because there's no downside really to doing the most basic of move sets. And there's so many mechanics in this game that you probably won't even use half of them, like cooking I never have, featuring such memorable characters as Seed the Scaleless, a literal griffin, Thanos, Toby Maguire, a mountain, a literal unicorn that's not even big, the dragon power rangers, Clifford the dog, bat croc, croc bat, oh fucking no, and the entire reskin gang. 
Hashtag everybody is here. This easily wins best game of the year for me. So hunters, get out and go join those cat gang. I thought I'd encapsulate um, indie games as well because no one really um, looks at any other indie games other than um, Devolver Digital. So I thought you know we, we should probably put in some of those because I actually go out of my way and check so many of them. That's why I put in some like Dead and so forth. Don't forget, as always, um, at 50 subs, there's a game giveaway, um, the Steam code for Suicide Guy. Um, so you got to be visible, visible for that as well. Um, thank you all for coming down to tonight's show. Um, now there's a pretty meme. Exquisite.